your action. I think believers of this generation are not fully told of the price of sin. This is a, a generation that wickedness is made acceptable. Sin and lawlessness and rebellion is packaged in such beautiful packs that they look innocent and harmless. That is why in our generation, those who prosper, those who do well are ungodly people. Why? Satan gives them backing knowing that eventually they shall burn in hell forever. And those who claim to serve God, they struggle because they are neither here nor there. Now you will understand. Try to understand these things. At this point, I think we should pray. I was thinking the introduction will be brief so that we... Can you rise? Drop everything so that you can lift up your two hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I submit myself for your speaking this morning. Your government, your will, your oppression, your salvation, whatever you want of me, according to your son Jesus Christ, and by the power of your spirit, bring it forth in me. Bring it forth in me by your speaking. You spoke at the beginning, and you brought forth light. Now speak today in this takeoff season. Bring forth whatever you want. Bring forth light. Bring forth glory. Bring forth power. Bring forth wealth. Bring forth salvation. Bring forth forgiveness. Say, so Lord, speak directly to my spirit. Pray like you have not prayed. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me hear your amen like fire. Stretch out those hands towards me. Lord, I speak that your spirit that searches all things, including your depth. Oh, the spirit that reveals your depth to us. That your spirit will reveal the depth of your wisdom and your oppression in the life of these ones who listen and cause darkness to fail. Cause death to die. Cause shame to go. Cause light and life and glory to emerge. According to your vision and plan in the Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I speak that there, there is no other speaking right now and after now except you. So every negative voice, every contrary voice, every voice of disobedience and rebellion, every voice of failure and death, I command your voices of hell, voices of darkness, be silent perfectly and forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Say, I'm blessed. Be seated. Be seated. Glory to God. I'm excited. I'm excited. So let's go back to that scripture. For he stretches out his hand against who? And this is the whole of this. And acts defiantly against the Almighty. This is it. So we are coming close. Running stubbornly against him with his strong embossed shield. This is rebellion. This is sin. Running against the will of God. Running against the plan of God. Running against the word of God. Running against the counsel of God. Running against the set order of God. Adam and Eve ran against the order of God and they became naked. And began to have shame. When you run against his cause, when you run against his word, once you run against him, you run into nakedness, you run into shame, shame you run into death. You are destined, something is fitting for you. All right. Next verse. Though he has covered his face with his fatness and made his ways heavy with fat, he dwells in. Come on, come on. He dwells in desolate cities in houses which no one inhabits which are yeah so 
destiny produces destiny destiny connects destiny a fool loves the company of a fool the scripture says if a, fool, a foolish person will begin to hang around wise person even a fool will eventually become like wise the problem is that fools don't like the company of the wise as I studied the scripture I discovered for Solomon to ask for wisdom he was already wise it takes wisdom to seek wisdom <laughs> sincerely as I examine Solomon already had seeds of wisdom operating in him a foolish person okay before we go too far let's look at the, the grandson the grandson of David Rehoboam who took over from his father Solomon he sought the counsel of elders and elders gave him wisdom what the father left behind was foolishness toward the end of the life of Solomon he wrote vanity of vanity everything is what why because his heart had departed from God when he asked for wisdom in 1 Kings chapter 3 his heart was seeking God he went to Gibeon the great and the highest the high place the great high place he went there and sacrificed a thousand burnt offering it takes a man who seeks God to do that and because he did that as a seeker of God in gratitude God asked him ask me for something anything you ask me I will grant you and he asked for wisdom but by the time he began to acquire women from strange land the scripture says these women turned his heart away from the God who had appeared to him twice in a revelation and what he left behind was Rehoboam a foolish man that means destiny is ultimately decided in God it still confirms this when you turn from God you are made ready to fail you are made you are fitting you are made fitting for destruction when you turn to God and walk with God it does not matter what the enemy says you are made ready for God you are made ready for what is the destiny of God for you all right so let's return to our scripture See, he dwells in desolate cities in houses which no one inhabits which are destined to become ruins. are you ready to pray some prayer before we move on let's agree stand up say father in the name of jesus christ if you can raise the hand intentionally say father in the name of jesus christ i bring my destiny back to you it does not matter what my father said about you it does not matter what your, my father said about me. It does not matter what my mother said about me. It does not matter what the ancestors had predicted about me. It does not matter what principalities and powers have said about me. You are the author of destiny. I return to you the master of my destiny. The one who makes me ready for life. The one who makes me ready for light say i return to you in your christ go ahead and speak i return to you i return to you say lord i return my destiny to you 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 I return my destiny to you. I return my destiny to you. I return my destiny to you. I return my destiny. I return my destiny. I return my destiny. I return my destiny, Lord. I return my destiny, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me hear your amen like fire lift up those two hands father in the name of jesus by this world change destinies whatever somebody has been made fit for made ready for made prepared for that is not in accordance with your vision 
let it be altered by the revelation of the government of your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be seated. Glory to God. Are you beginning to have understanding? Yeah. So this month and going forward, we shall correct things in your life. A lot of things shall be corrected. You shall. That's why I want you to walk. Every knowledge you get, pray with it, fast with it, sow with it, talk with it. Every, every. You don't get the word of God and drop it in church. You document it. You note it. You pray with it. You fast with it. So when we say covenant fast, you you are not children for so that you can be given scripture. If you are not given scripture, you already have revelation from your revelation journal. You bring it forth to fast, bring it forth to soul, bring it forth to do offering, bring it forth in to, to pray, bring it forth. So you rise at midnight, you know what to do. You, you rise early in the morning, you know what to do. Before you go to bed, you know what to do. When you are sitting, you when you are walking, when you are as you are talking, you know what to talk because there is revelation. This is how life is reprogrammed. What has reprogrammed my life is not the prayer of a man. Revelation. I have been working on my life with specific revelation for years. In fact, I will say for one revelation for more than 10 years. And I'm not sure I'm going to change. For more than 10 years, one scripture, one revelation has been with me as my greatest companion every day. Glory to God. All right. Let's do some further work. Some some work. Um, the Greek word, you see, we have seen the Hebrew word, which is Old Testament. The Greek word for destiny is keimai. Keimai. Keimai is K E I M A I. Okay. Kemai means to be laid. We are going to bring this together. Kemai means to be laid. Like you when you, you lay a baby on a bed. Kemai is destiny. To be destined. It means to be laid. So destiny is where you are laid how you are laid when i was a little boy there was this saying that kept ringing as you make your bed so will you lie on it destiny to say to be destined means to be laid laid like a foundation of this house this house is determined by the foundation that was laid you don't build a structure until you do what? You lay. So this, this, the destiny of this house is the foundation of this house. When a structure engineer, structural engineer, an architect, people involved with building and in building business, when they come and examine your drawing and then examine your foundation, they will know whether you are in alignment. Whether the destiny of this house resembles the future of this house. The future is how it, how it projects itself up. The rooms and all that. That's what people will enjoy. That's what people will, you know, like the comfort. The, the What will make people comfortable and wealthy looking and all that. That's the purpose. But what is the destiny? The foundation. How is it set? Because if it is not properly set, it will not accommodate the glory. The purpose of the destiny is results. But the destiny is how it is laid. The result will be determined by the destiny. Oh. Did you get that? So, what is the foundation ready? How the house will be, look like is made ready 
in the foundation how the house how far the house will go is made fitting is made set made ready destined in the foundation so the foundation of the house is the destiny of the house so destiny is foundation destiny is your foundation how you are founded so in the Greek word kemai means to be laid and we lay foundation it means to be laid means to lay and to be laid that's destiny kemai means to be appointed so destiny is appointment there are those appointed to fail until the appointment changes everything they do they fail people I have tried everything I've tried marriage doesn't work I've tried business doesn't work others are prospering in that same business but since I started it collapsed there is an appointment over that person's life that person has been laid for failure the person has been appointed and set and made ready is it connected can you see the connection oh praise God praise God now you can begin to write down any any wrong appointment over my destiny and before we finish don't worry we will resolve it where is the role of God in destiny and what is the role of the enemy that's how we will end today in case we don't go too much too far don't worry there is so much to be done you need to take it bit. that's why you just have to understand there are prayer points there are prayer there are issues that you have to pray about as you're already here what is it that the enemy has appointed me for because hmm, Christ was appointed for something and the devil had a different appointment for him Luke's gospel the temptation of Jesus was a revelation of the appointment of Satan over Jesus the father had an appointment he was destined to save me he was set to save me he was made ready when the angel said you shall be conceived by the power or you shall conceive by the power of the holy spirit and that one that shall be born shall be called the holy one he was to bring about my salvation and my holiness and the enemy had an appointment over him also command these stones let them become bread if you are the son of god but he came to teach i am the bread of life john chapter 6 whoever follows me shall not hunger Whoever believes in me shall not says, I am the bread of life. I am. Before he died at the last, last supper, he said, take and eat. This is my body. Which shall be given off for you. Which means I came so that you may eat me and live. And the scripture says, by his stripes you have been healed. Isaiah 53 verse 4 into 5. Second Peter he will see this now why is why will the enemy this was the appointment this was how jesus was set this is how jesus was made ready this is what jesus was made ready for this is how he was laid this is how he was prepared the fact that joseph did not give a seed for his flesh to be formed and the spirit of the father got his flesh formed in the womb of the mother was so that the flesh would be that which will give me life he was made ready for that. He was destined for that. But before he started preaching, the scripture said the spirit led him to wilderness where the enemy tempted him. Satan tempted him. The devil tempted him for 40 days. And the beginning of the temptation is if you are, then the next verse, next verse. And the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, do what? That's a different appointment. For one, that God has destined to be light, there is a contrary appointment. A contrary destiny. Now, did I tell you knowledge is coming? So that you will begin to understand because you cannot apply what you don't understand. You don't even know how to pray until you understand. If you don't understand, then pray for understanding first. What you don't understand, you cannot use. So every one of you sitting down here, there is God's destiny. Let's travel far. Let's make it easier for you to understand. 
Every one of you sitting down here, there is God's destiny. What do I mean? There is what God has laid you for. There is how God has laid you. There is what God has made you ready for. There is what God has prepared you for. There is what God has de destined you for. But that's not all. There is what the enemy has prepared you for. Has made you ready for. And the enemy uses sin to get you ready for his own destiny. God uses righteousness to get you ready for his destiny. What you will eventually become will become your choice. Whether you choose the way of evil and they are made ready for evil. Whoever comes into your life rubs off on evil. If you meet a cultist and you marry a cultist, you have been swallowed into one that has been made ready for destruction. You're going to beget children that will be fed for destruction. Do you want to rise? Rise. Will you want to raise your hand? Raise. Will you want to say something? Say it. Do you want me to tell you what to say? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you have made me ready for, which the enemy is trying to corrupt in me, which the enemy is trying to destroy in me, by your grace and mercy, I accept reversal of it. In the Christ Jesus. So this morning, by the name of Jesus, by the finished work of the cross, I reverse every negative destiny of Satan over my life. I reverse shame where you appointed glory for me. I reverse death where you appointed life for me. I reverse destruction where you appointed salvation for me. I reverse darkness where you are painted lights for me. Pray like this matters to you. In the soil, you are making new wine. Now I surrender. You were breaking new ground in the crushing, in the pressing. You were making new wine in the soil. I now surrender you are breaking a new ground so I in the name of Jesus Christ I say in the name of Jesus Christ lift up those two hands I speak over you where God led you for light every attempt of the enemy to impose darkness I reverse it in the name of Jesus Christ. where God sets you for glory in any way that the enemy is making you ready for shame I reverse it in the name of Jesus Christ ah, where God sets you for glory and might where God sets you as victory and victorious and the enemy has appointed you for defeat and struggling I reverse it in the name of Jesus I command that today God's appointment in you be ratified I declare and it's a command that what God had made you ready for in the Christ will come forth in the name of Jesus. Say, so, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let every wrong destiny in my life die. From now, pray, pray, let every wrong destiny in my life die. From 
Ghana. In a way, you make me one. In a soil, I'm surrendered. You are breaking me around. So I heal to you until you can forgive. To understand, make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me. Jesus, bring me wine out of me. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I can't hear with nothing. Jesus Christ, let me hear your amen like fire. Raise those hands. By the spirits of God, I correct every destiny error in your life. Amen. Be seated. Let's travel some far, some more distance. So Kemai means to be laid. Kemai means to be appointed. Kemai means to store up. To store up. The scripture says in the psalm, how great is the goodness that the Lord has stored up. The Lord has laid up. Has laid in stock for those who fear him. So destiny is what is stored up for somebody. In God, in Christ, through Christ Jesus, his son, there are things he has taught up for you. Those are the things we will be talking about and orchestrating and demonstrating throughout this season. But we want you to know that just as God has taught up salvation for you in the son, the enemy has taught up destruction. The way of achieving God's destiny is righteousness. Don't forget. This is the key. The, engage, the rule of engagement of God over the earth, over angels, over demons, over his children, over every living soul. The rule of engagement of God is what? Righteousness. That's it. If you forget it, you miss it. And as we begin to study, you will discover that there are two phases of righteousness. There is righteousness as gift, which you have in salvation. It's free. You don't acquire it. Then there is the other side of righteousness. The righteous actions. The righteous speaking. Your deeds. Those who teach New Testament and talk about grace, a lot of people miss this revelation. They talk about righteousness one dimensional righteousness that is as a gift unto us justification made right before the father made right in the sight of the father through the free gift of redemption in the son but they don't talk about the manifestation of righteousness and just can say by their fruits you shall know them so it is by the fruits of an individual that you will know whether the person has received righteousness. That means the spiritual ontological righteousness, which is a free gift from God in Christ, must be made manifest in ethical, moral righteousness. 
who you are made right with the father must manifest in what you do if what you do do not connect and align with what you claim to be in Christ it means you are not goats make sounds that dogs don't make the day you hear a, a dog making the sound of chicken something is wrong with the nature it means the dog cannot fit into where dogs what dogs inherit the nature of a dog is in what once you hear a dog now doing what dogs like the fowl will do things have gone wrong Some, one can be killed for the other destiny has been corrupted <laughs> praise God praise God we, are, we, we, have, we have a whole world in front of us to study and be free the scripture says you shall know the truth and what shall the truth do Okay, so Kemai means to store up. So destiny is what is stored up. In Christ Jesus, the Father has stored up glory. We shall see it. Has stored up kingship, rulership, authority. And Satan too has stored up. The same way he had things in stock and in store for Jesus. If the leader of our salvation was persecuted, just because you shall be persecuted <laughs> no one will be greater than the master no servant if the enemy stored things up for the savior and the interest was to make sure the salvation does not come to pass and you say you are saved you cannot enjoy what was stored up for you in Christ until you overcome what the enemy store up, stores up for you this is the teaching the gospel that must be told this is how generation will escape from death and corruption. Otherwise, the gospel can be taught in such a way that believers are delivered into the hands of Satan. Made to surrender to sin. In the false understanding of grace. Now, Kemai, which is destiny, means exists to exist. So destiny is existence. God has a particular existence for his children. The enemy also has a particular what? Existence. Kemai means to be placed. To be placed. Somebody who is a governor is placed by God. And the enemy also has a place for that one. <laughs> he said, no government, no king, no kingdom. No authority is. There is none. Except it comes from God. Which means it is God who has placed people over others. But the enemy has an agenda also. To place people that God has placed over others. To place them against others. That's why a believer can be a manager in the office. And is the worst manager ever. If he does not play by the rule of righteousness... Somebody can fast and pray for long in order to be lifted. And once he's lifted, it becomes more fitting for hell. And the only secret is when you depart from the laws of righteousness, from the principles of righteousness, you begin to fulfill the destiny of Satan. Believers, God's children and members of the family, what I'm trying to say in summary, before we go too far, there are two phases of destiny. Destiny has two faces. Like, this is my face, right? Have you seen some masquerades that wherever they turn to, there is a face? Okay, that is destiny. So, I have a face here, but there is a face here. The face here is righteousness. I am set for glory here. I am set, but if I don't pay attention, I begin to walk backward means I walk against what God has set for me. That is another face. That is where the enemy is. The enemy is backward. That's why the scripture says we are not people who now go back and perish. 
He said, whoever has laid his hand upon the plow and does what? Looks back. So there is a, there is a face at the back. The back face is the corruption of the front face. That is why any marriage can be corrupted. Including marriages celebrated by popes. By the mightiest of men and women of God. Oh, you see, an angel announced to me, whoa, 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 this is your wife, this is your husband. And the engagement ring dropped from heaven. If you don't walk by the laws of righteousness, if you don't walk by the principles by the set standard of righteousness, what God gave you will destroy you. Why? The enemy is involved. The scripture says we are not fighting against flesh. Come on, come on. We are not fighting against what? Flesh and blood, but against principalities. This is this, is this whole thing. So, being saved by grace is not freedom from persecution by the enemy. No. It is to give you victory. Being saved by grace does not in any way exclude you from issues of trial and temptation. God permits you as long as you are on earth to be proven through trials and temptation. You must be proven. As gold is tested by fire and revealed through fire. A believer must be revealed. This is why you see great moments. Somebody was given admission to study a discipline in the university and the person had a breakthrough. Testimonies at the beginning. That person doesn't need it, will not necessarily succeed. Some people say what will be, will be. Shut up, oh. Because there are different options of what will be. There are many faces of what will be. So you cannot say what will be, will be. That is the language of a taste. That is the language of, of, of worldliness. It's not like that. That's not how it works. Judah can miss it. Jude, Joseph can fail also. If Joseph does not flee from the wife of Potiphar, Joseph will end up being the king of the house of Potiphar. By the way, Joseph was destined to be the prime minister of where? Of Egypt. But there was an opportunity for him to rule in the house of Potiphar. What does it mean to rule in the house of Potiphar? He was succeeding already. They, and the only thing that made him not the lord and the ruler of the house of Potiphar was the wife of Potiphar. That is the only thing that made Potiphar higher than him. That was exclusive list. Only for Potiphar. And the wife donated himself. Sleep with me and rule over this house now. That means there is no future for you. Enjoy me and enjoy everything in this house. And settle here. Some people go to the university, enjoy everything in this university. They don't ever graduate. 20 years after, no certificate. Why? They enjoyed everything. Oh, I don't know what I'm talking to somebody. Some people travel to Lagos, enjoy everything in Lagos, never return. If they return, it is their corpse or their failure specimen. Some people go to America, the day they return is deportation, no documentation. They enjoy everything, enjoy drugs. Enjoy prostitution, enjoy gambling, enjoy uselessness, laziness, just enjoy everything. A destiny that will succeed does not enjoy everything. That's what the temptation of Jesus has revealed to us. To succeed as my redeemer, he refused to enjoy what the enemy offered him. Bow, and I will give you government and control over all this. He refused to enjoy that. If you are going somewhere as a young girl, there are things you don't enjoy. If you are going somewhere as a young man to, 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 to manifest the destiny that has been stored up for you by God, there are things you say, no, mercy. The man who gave me introduction to French in the seminar, seminary, one very, very, very funny Dr. Omo, 
I will not forget it. Is it a polite way of rejecting an offer? No. Make No. To someone. Then you thank somebody for the opportunity and still who say what? No. If you are going to somewhere as a young girl, you have a future and a vision that has been stored up for you by God, which is destiny. That has been laid for you which, by God, which is called destiny. That has been apportioned and appointed, lay, made ready for you. Glory made ready for you. There are moments you walk into, you see beautiful things and you say no. And the scripture talks of Jesus who for the reason of the glory that was in front of him endured all sort of things. There are things you must endure. Not pleasant, but you endure. Why? Because there is a future laid in stock for you. Can you rise? Now you already know that God has a destiny for you. How many of you now are aware that God has a destiny for you? Oh, praise God. How many of you also are aware that the devil has a destiny for you? If you are aware, raise your hand. Now, you may not like it or not, but it's the truth. God, the father had destiny for Jesus. Satan, before he started preaching, Satan offered him an alternative of the destiny. Every young girl you see as a, a prostitute has a different destiny. A young man who is a chief executioner in a secret court has a different destiny that is glorious, laid up for him by God in Christ. It is by choice you fulfill destiny. It is by choice. If you want to write it down, write it down. I'll wait for you. You don't, re you don't fulfill destiny by force. It is by what? By choice. That's how destinies are fulfilled. By choice, not by force. Oh, your father may have forced you to go to school, but you will only succeed by choice. Your father may have woken you up in the morning every, every Monday and would beat you and escort you to school. That is how I started school. My father would beat me and escort me to school and I was not alone. Many other children like that without taking bath because you didn't want to. Without school uniform because you didn't wash it during weekend. But my father will escort you down and other children will boo you. Woo, woo, woo. But what you make out of that day is no longer about your father. It's your choice. I belong to the class of children that will go to school from break we will disappear into the bush and not come back till the school is well over two three hours after the school was over that's when we are, so we attended school halfway there used to be short break and long break at short break we disappeared long break we are not back find out where we will be in the creeks fishing with our bare hands eating raw shrimps and stuffs that's how we grew up that's why i don't believe i don't believe this thing called them um, whatever it is they call them they cannot touch me because i've endured all sort of things i've eaten raw fish and i've fish with my bare hand and it's not in, in, in this land that what came from china will now come and give me here nonsense 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 it's nonsense, absolutely. Do you know what I have survived? Chinese should find out whether they know. They cannot survive what I have survived here. Sincerely, I don't care the mutation of it, the variation of it. It is the same thing. It is the same thing. It's the same thing. It cannot touch me. I don't know about you. It's a personal thing. Oh. This is not about anybody. I'm not speaking for anybody. I'm speaking for myself. It can't, it cannot, it's impossible. It cannot touch me. I have survived. I have survived things. That's how we started life. So I am standing here today by choice. I'm not here by accident or by imposition. I had to choose to be here. So where you will be tomorrow will not be because your father forced you or your pastor taught you. You must choose to make something out of this revelation. 
that you are pastored by an anointed man doesn't mean you will become anything anointed you must choose to play by anointing this is how destiny works if satan pro projected a false destiny onto this messiah the one that the messiah came to die for they must first of all choose not to play out the, the wrong destiny of satan because he's still in the business of telling people fall from this height down he's still in the business of commanding people who are for the height to come down he's still in the destiny for those who are destined to rule in the heavenly places and telling them to bow down and worship him in order to rule in the earthly places that's still the business of the enemy he's still in the business of telling people turn stones to become bread that means don't suffer yourself deal with things don't sacrifice yourself just guys came to sacrifice himself but the enemy says sacrifice stones he came so that his body will become bread he said no don't become bread because if you become bread you will become living bread unto them give them stones so that they will be dead stones dead miracles they say somebody has vomited python but somebody is still a sinner oh miracles if you saw miracles signs and signs and signs and somebody goes home that night fornicating committing adultery stealing in the office the following day and paying tithes from the offering from the from the from the from the things that have been stolen while signs and wonders are going on in church who told you signs change anybody's life you choose the truth and the truth will do what An introduction to destiny chapter one lift up your two hand patrick grace henry is the president Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday, 8.30 a.m., Champions University, and subsequently, Extended Family Assembly, 10 a.m., aired live on Planet 101.1 FM, Uyo, Venue, Goshen, Kilometer 14, Mwaniba Road, Ekamba Sukara, Uyo, Akwaimom State. Join us live on Facebook and YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and via the Christ Radio app. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Partners and Friends of Grace Family Outreach. You can be part of this Grace Revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For prayers, counseling and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0907-383-8742. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.